Hi there, my name is Lisette. Thank you for stopping by and getting lost in the library with me. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about books that I read in the month of September and that I'm currently reading um, for the month of September. I don't know how you guys are, but I love having um, a large variety of books to read. Um, so I like kind of getting lost in some of them. Sometimes I'm in a mood for a certain kind of book, other times I'm not. Um, and my cat may make an appearance today. She's being a little feisty. <laughs> this evening um but yeah so i just wanted to go ahead and get started with some of the books that i read um some of them they were library books some of them um so i don't currently have them with me anymore but i'll make sure to include a photo so for the first book um is icarus girl by helen oyeyemi oyemi um so I'll go ahead and place it here i have seen so many different um quotes on this book i always would see the book cover um and for whatever reason i was just like no not today not today but one day i just decided to go ahead and grab it just because it was always on my tbr for the longest time and i am so drawn to the book cover um in the beginning it was a little bit of a slow read because i was reading multiple books at the same time but when i actually decided to kind of buckle down and really sit there um one evening it instantly grabbed me it is an incredible book um it is about a family um who travels back to africa which is the mother's origin um country and the little girl i believe is about 10 years old goes i to africa i, I don't know if it's like her first time ever but she goes to africa and i remember this distinct chapter was like and this is the summer that everything changed and i was like "Ooh, what does this mean um you get the glimpses that she encounters potentially the way the, the book is set up potentially a, an imaginary friend you start thinking okay what if this is instead a ghost um but she makes this friend named tilly tilly um and no one else can see her she doesn't let anyone else see her they create this very secretive friendship um and you really begin to fall in love with this tilly tilly character you really begin to be very curious about her you want to know more of her story um and then the summer ends and they return back to the uk which is where they live and suddenly tilly tilly is there she says that she too has moved um with her family to the uk and lives right across the street um, and this little 10 year old girl, she's excited. Okay, my new best friend. She has a hard time making friends. Um, so many things happen. I don't want to ruin this at all. It was an intense book. I could not put it down. Um, and I remember I would read it right before bed. And I regret doing that because it has some very creepy um, moments. Um, and it was one of those books that just sticks with you. I remember I finished it and I was just stunned and i was thinking about it constantly um i was telling all my friends about it and oh god poor them because they had to hear me just talk about these characters something that i really loved about this book was um, the opportunity to learn more about african folk culture learn more about their folk stories their potential boogeymen and i can relate to that um because we have el cuy la llorona um with mexican with my mexican heritage so it was really beautiful to kind of get a glimpse of of what the stories they grew up learning so i really recommend the icarus girl it's a wonderful book um i know now october's coming in so maybe if you want something a little creepy crawly that may be a really great book um so yes for the next book, I have Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart by um, Matthias Mazio. I may be mispronouncing that, please excuse me. I originally found out about this book, this story, this movie on Netflix a couple years ago and I fell in love with this movie. I remember I saw it and I finished watching it and I clicked replay because I, I was just blown away by this very unique story this beautiful animation it's a french story with french animation um and i discovered that the entire soundtrack was created by this band and i have to include it here because i don't know what the band is exactly um and the main character um 
I believe is voiced by the lead singer of the band and the lead singer of the band actually wrote the book Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart and it's wonderful that not, he not only wrote the book but then had such um, hands-on approach when actually creating the movie um, so I highly recommend reading the book and the movie the book um, its ending is a little sadder <laughs> if you've seen the movie you know that the ending is already very sad so I was like how can the book be a little sadder but it is um, but I highly recommend reading the book and the movie. Um, it has some, again, a little creepy tendencies, like like spooky. So maybe you'll want to read it for Halloween or around that time. I highly recommend it. Um, I read the book, I believe, in like a day. Um, it is so good. It's about this little boy who was born on the coldest day in um, Edinburgh's in Scotland's history. And the little boy is born on the coldest day. And because of that, his heart is frozen. Um, he encounters um, a midwife who helps birth him and actually has to replace his frozen heart with a cuckoo clock heart. Um, and she decides to make these rules in order for him to survive with this non-real heart, this cuckoo clock heart. He has certain rules he has to abide by, like um, never falling in love. And what happens when he's 10, 11, 12 years old? He falls in love and this crazy adventure happens I loved this book. I was just a little saddened by the end because I had already seen the movie. So yeah, you kind of have that drawback of having these expectations of the movie. Um, but I highly recommend both the movie and the book. It's incredible. Um, for my next book, um, it is do, 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 Froth on the Daydream by Boreas Vian very similar <laughs> experience to Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart where I encountered the movie before the book. So the movie Mood Indigo, um, directed by French director uh, Michel Gondry. Um, you may know his work, I believe he did um, The Internal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind um, with Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet. So um, I have been so in love with his movies for so long so I was going through this binge one summer while I was watching all his movies and I discovered Mood Indigo and I fell in love. Um, the soundtrack, um, it has a huge, Duke Ellington plays a huge part in the soundtrack. Um, I am so bad with it, I believe his name is John Paul. John Paul Sartre, I'm not 100% sure, I'll make sure to include it here. Um, the book gets a lot of this inspiration from these artists um, and authors and philosophers and it's just so incredible when it plays a huge part in the book and in the movie which I really really enjoyed. So watching um, the movie I discovered that it's based on a book, um, Froth on the Daydream by Boris Vian um, and it apparently is like a French classic that I believe in school um, students are actually required to read the book in school so I thought that was really cool so I read the book and same do I think I, I finished it in about two three days I just skimmed through it it was not skimmed through I just <laughs> flew by with it it was such a great book it has this incredibly like eclectic whimsical vibe to it that the movie is able to adapt so well it's almost as if the book was made to become a movie which is just incredible but um it's just wonderful it's about a young man who life is perfect for him and he finds that all his best friends are falling in love and he's like hey i want to fall in love too it's gonna happen this evening and there goes my cat miss maja <laughs> um he decides he too wants to fall in love one day so he goes to a party and he demands for it to happen and he falls in love um there are so many wonderful whimsical characters there's a little rat that lives in his apartment who it plays such a big role in the book um and he falls in love and the adventure of the beginning matrimony happens but suddenly his beloved falls sick and he devotes his entire life in trying to cure her um and i don't want to ruin the book or in any way but it is just such an incredible book i highly highly recommend it um 
and definitely watch the movie right after because <laughs> it's just so nice to be able to imagine the characters in your head and then see them interpreted right after so it's really cool and it's this wonderful little french film um for my next book i read japanese mythology and film by yoshiko okuyama um i'm a big fan of anime i'm a big fan of um japanese animation i have been since a very very young age i think i first saw my first anime which was inuasha when i was like five six years old so i've always been fascinated by japanese animation and so i wanted to read a book to explain a little bit more about Japanese folklore um, mythology because I know when watching a lot of animation I always feel like there's something is missing I'm missing some sort of context I'm missing some sort of stories that potentially um, Japanese children grew up knowing so I decided to read this book and I highly recommend it because it gives you all of that it breaks down huge pieces of Japanese media um, from old, old school films to Japanese animation to more modern um, Japanese films that we are so, I feel, we are so now accustomed to, like Spirited Away um, and Princess Mononoke and um, Ghost Shell, like it, Ghost in the Shell, excuse me. So it has um, a wonderful breakdown of Japanese folklore and it just analyzes these works of, of Japanese media which I absolutely love um mama speak good yeah um so yeah I highly recommend this if you're a fan of Japanese animation Masha I had the windows open earlier and I think a little bug flew in so <laughs> she's just super stimulated right now <laughs> um so yeah I highly recommend this book if you want to know a little bit more about Japanese um Japanese um, mythology so yes so I did want to mention with that book, the Japanese mythology and film, um, that is a book that I had at work. So I would very often read it during my 15 minute or lunch period, my lunch break, excuse me. Um, so that was really nice to kind of get a break of it. So that one, I was reading every day. Um, so I wasn't able to complete it, but it was really fun to have kind of just like moments away from work to read that book. Um, and once now that one's done, so now I'm doing um, the Hobbit audiobook. Um, so whenever I do have a break, I kind of walk around and I listen to it, especially because the weather is just so nice. So I have um, the great blessing to actually work in a library, so I have access to books all the time. So I'm able to kind of walk around the library or walk around um, that area and just enjoy reading Hobbit. So that is another book that I'm currently reading. Um, I'm a big fan of. <laughs> Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit film series. Um, I've always been so interested in reading the books, but for whatever reason, I've always considered them very intimidating. Um, I didn't know how or where to start, and I decided, you know what, let's do it. Let's do it. So I decided to do it with an audiobook, and so far I am loving it, especially because I'm able to kind of listen to this audiobook. Um, I'll have to look at who was narrating it, and I'll include it here. But it's just so wonderful to, to have um, already seen all the films and already kind of have the characters and their voices and their mannerisms already in mind when I'm listening to the audiobook. And I love these films so much that I'm listening to the audiobook and I'm getting emotional. I find myself getting very emotional to listen to it. Um, so I'm absolutely enjoying it. I know I'm not going to finish um, all of these books anytime soon, but that is something that I'm currently reading um, in the month of September. And now for books that I have actually in hand and things that I'm starting to read. I don't know how you guys are, but I love having different books. So I will get a little bit of this one, take a break and do this one. So I think it just really depends on my mood. Um, so for some books that I currently do have in hand, um, some of these are library books. So I have um, Perla by Frederick Braun. And for this one, I was first very interested by um, the book cover i don't know how you guys are but when i am on the hunt for a new book i'm always looking at the book cover <laughs> that's what first gets my attention so that's what got me for this one and then um i read the back and i was so intrigued um it's about um a son who his mother passes away and um he knows that his mother was actually um a survivor 
from the Holocaust, but that is a part of her life that she did not want to um, talk about in any way. She didn't want to face that, but he knows that for the longest time, her entire life, that is something that she had been enduring. So after she passes, he just feels this this urgency, this void to learn more about his mother in any way. So he does all this research to discover um, all her experiences um, and he gets a lot of information. And it's a lot about grief, loss, um, this desire to know our parents a lot more on a more intimate level. And a lot of the times we don't get that opportunity. Um, there's always this, this this barrier, I feel like, with parents. Sometimes we're not able to really know them on a deeper level. So you see um, his experiences. So this is a wonderful book. It's a very short book. Um, some of the content is, is, is difficult for me to digest, so it's something that I'm kind of taking my time with, but it is so wonderfully written. It's, it's so wonderful. And um, I believe he's a, French, he's a French author, so you get to learn a little bit more about... Um, French um, history, um, French classic literature, so that's something I'm really interested in because I'm getting to learn more about different authors because he mentions a lot of them in them, so this is a really, really great book. Um, another book that again <laughs> enticed me from its book cover is um, The Clouds of Luca by D.S. Butterworth. Um, I think maybe it's just the time of season, but I just fell in love with this book cover. The colors, everything just intrigued me. Um, this is poetry, um, a lot about the author's travels, visiting different um, countries. There's a little bit of Italy, some um, visiting Africa. Um, so it's beautifully written in poetry. Um, I'm finding myself just reading it before bed, just kind of relaxing a little bit. It's, it's beautifully written. Um, and it's a lot about more just like inner um, reflection and it, um, he talks a lot about just the things that he witnesses from his day-to-day -day travel so this so far has been really really nice um super excited to finish it it's one of those books where i kind of want to cling to it for as long as i can so that's that and then for my next book oh my gosh is actually pride and prejudice by jane austen um i believe i was in fifth grade when i first encountered the book and then the series excuse me not the book the movie um directed by joe Wright with Keira knightley oh my gosh um and the series um i've just been so in love with the story for so many years and i think i guess if i really try to reflect on it i think i've just been so possessive of the way those stories are um interpreted through through film through through television that I kind of don't want it to be tainted. I think I just love the way they are so much. I know sometimes when you read the book, it's, things are so very different. So I think if I really think about that, maybe the biggest reason why I just kind of didn't want to read it for so long, but I was like, oh my gosh, I love these stories so much. I need to read my first Jane Austen novel. So I'm a little saddened that it's taken me this long to read my first Jane Austen, but oh my gosh, I get it. I get it. I get it. It is so incredible. Um, where is my i'm barely this far in um and oh my gosh it's amazing i've actually started watching the series again so i'm able to kind of um compare the series to the book and the series just does the book so well i think but um i am just in love with this the way it's written the pacing the characters oh my gosh and it, i find myself reading it and i'm just like oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm just on every word i'm 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 on everywhere i'm savoring every single moment every darcy moment oh my gosh so i totally totally get it um so i'm absolutely loving this book um i find myself <laughs> just like needing to read it i'm like oh my gosh it's time it's time I, oh my god when am i gonna get another little break to start reading this again so i'm super super excited for this um i feel like i've spoken enough about the many books that i am reading um and i have read in the month of september i'm very excited because um I believe after I finish Pride and Prejudice, I'm going to go ahead and um, start doing Hispanic Heritage Month. So I have some great books that I want to be reading for that. And I know it's probably going to extend over October, which I'm totally fine with. So I think for my next video, I'll talk about the, the books that I'm going to be reading for Hispanic Heritage Month. But I want to say thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for getting lost in the library with me.